Hello, today we are live and we are still, we're talking about rebellion uh, and witchcraft. I'm going to, we talked a little bit about Korah's rebellion. And last week we, uh, we, uh, you know, where the judgment of God came upon Korah and 250 men that rebelled against God. And we're going to look at some things today because this is going to springboard to the fall of Babylon and how everything, it, you know, there's nothing new under the sun. So everything happens uh, for a reason before God's judgment comes upon the earth or uh, calamity comes upon on a nation. There, uh, There's different uh, characteristics that we can see in society that shows us that judgment is pending. And this is in the fall of nations. And these and some of the characteristics is this rebellion. Rebellion is the same as witchcraft. And so we're going to look at, at uh, first we're going to look in Deuteronomy. And we're going to look at Korah, Dathion, and Abraham, and how that uh, these men in Deuteronomy eleven six, it says, and what he did unto Dathion and Abram and the son of Eliab, the son of Reuben. So the last time I spoke, I said that they were priests, but God, in, in he kind of made it, uh, brought it to my attention that these men, Kor Kor was from he was from the Levit, uh, Levitical priest, and he was a son of or the grandson of Aaron, the high priest. But the men that followed him were not. They may be worked. They may work close to Korah. They may have worked on the tabernacle, but they specifically were not the uh, a priest or a Levite. But God makes us. He brings us to our attention and makes it known that these men were of the tribe of Reuben. And I, I was looking at that this week and I was thinking, Reuben, there's some really things about Reuben. There's some things about him, uh, good and bad. Reuben was the first uh, born of, of Leah's sons. He was the firstborn of all of Jacob's son. So he carried by by law, he was the birthright double portion heir to to the promises of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and he would have been given the uh, the blessing and the birthright if he did not fail in his conduct. The Bible says that he failed in his conduct in. Uh, in Genesis thirty five twenty two, that he went and he uh, and he defiled Jacob's bed, or he went into a, one of Jacob's concubines. And when you look at that, it in Scripture, script, uh, it tells us that uh, this is an act of rebellion. This is an act of domination. When you when you go in and you defile just the 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 women or or you uh, go into a leader's camp, just like uh, Absalom did with uh, with David, as soon as he became uh, David's enemy and he was trying to dethrone him, he took all of David's concubines and he went up on the roof and he defiled each one of them. He was showing uh, his dominance over over uh, over the kingdom that he had he he was uh, in his uh, the base nature was showing his authority over his father. So he was desecrating his, uh, David's property. And this is exactly what Reuben did. He desecrated Jacob's property. And, and the Bible says that you're in, uh, the, it says in Deuteronomy that two seeds are not to be sown in, uh, in one field. And so two seeds, that means that's even naturally or spiritually or, or, or we, we can look at our bodies as, as the house or the field. 
of God, and there's only should be one husbandman or one uh, uh, a vine dresser, one person that tends to the field, and only one seed should be in that field. If there's more than one seed, then there's chaos and confusion, and there is a mixing of 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 order it's a mixing of light and darkness it's a mixing of two uh, distinct seeds coming into uh, into one uh, combining to one seed and there is confusion so the ge the geno or the uh, genetic modification of that seed is now being compromised now its purpose and plans and and what it's produced is not going to have the same effect. It's going to be a distorted and a perversion. This is exactly what happened with with uh, one going into an uh, 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 into a uh, having sexual relationship and going into a, uh, a a relationship with many partners. That person or that uh, or that or that union becomes very confused and it brings chaos it doesn't only just bring chaos in the people it, it, it's just not secluded to the 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 man or the woman or or the family dynamics but all of society suffers when there is the mixing of see when they are when you uh when the man is, or a woman is not protecting their vessel in honor and they're allowing many uh many seeds to be sown in a field it will cause corruption the bible says it causes confusion it causes um, uh, confusion and chaos in the soul and the, and so this is what we're seeing in our society today that there's there's role reversals there's there's uh, there's definitely di uh, distortion within the mind in the psychology of people that they're they're not as uh, they're they're not as uh, as um, uh, mentally sound as they used to be because there's so much of uh, premarital sex and promiscuity and sexual perversion within our uh, society that is causing things to become distorted, perverted, and chaotic. And so we, uh, within the minds, but we see this as normal because we don't see the chaos because we're in the middle of chaos. This is why the uh, someone who is uh, inside of a storm doesn't always necessarily see the dangers of the storm because they're in the midst of the storm. They don't understand what's the surrounding effects, what's happening to one part of the country as, or one part of the city or one part of the town because you're right in the middle. You're right in the heart of it, but there's things going on all around you, but you don't know exactly what's taking place. And this is exactly what, what, the chaotic life we uh, we have uh, inherited through sexual perversion. We all don't always know the the effects that it's having upon society or upon people's minds or on their souls because we like to cover them up. We always kind of make it uh, like it's no big deal, but people are suffering because they, there is this perversion. And this is exactly when we look at at Reuben, and, and we look at the story of Dathan and Ebron, they had already incited rebellion with Korah. Korah had envy, he had jealousy, and he was coming against the man of God. And Dathan and Abraham coming from a cor already corrupt seed line that already had rebellion in, in its pattern, because uh, Reuben had already set the motion, he had already defiled his bloodline and not say that it's not that they could not be redeemed or they can change the course of their life of course but that prominent nature that nature that dominant nature now from their grandfather reuben is now inside of them and now it's easier for them to act in the same characteristics as their grandfather or their forefathers because there is because uh reuben had left his uh he has left he left his position as a son he he went across the line 
and went in, uh, and defiled his uh, father's bed. He so he crossed the line of morality and ethics, and and just being uh, respectful to his grandfather. And he did, and he uh, defiled or uh, degraded his sea line. And there was a curse. There's a curse always that follows with sin. So it, there's a, always a consequence with sin. So anyway, so there's, so we're seeing that rebellion is at the core of, of a fall. So we see that because of their, of this rebellion that was against the uh, people of God, uh, you know, a, um, Moses and Aaron, and that there and there was no repentance. God gave them space, and they there was this wasn't just one, uh, but one day. But this was a, a few, you know, it was a it was a progressive in its actions, and God took action upon that situation, and there was judgment. And the the Bible says that the mouth, the earth, opened up and swallowed those who were involved, who was, uh, who was working and acting in defiant rebellion against God's anointed one, against God's plan and order, and, who, and those who was, were trying to bring discord and confusion amongst the people. God was separating these people off. He was he was set, setting them apart from the nation. He was going to make them a, a, a kingdom, a priest, and a holy nation that would represent him. And then there was then the enemy inside of people rose up within the midst of the camp and God had to judge it which God is going to judge every situation. Everything will become into an account. Everything is, is, is being, is on God's radar. No one is with, is without consequences. The Bible says the, uh, the Lord is not mocked. Those, you know, if you, uh, the, the, that which you sow, you will also reap. So God is not mocked. Everything is under his radar. He knows sin uh, is going to come to its apex. It's going to come, it's going up before him. And when it reaches it at its peak, God's judgment is going to happen. It could happen individually or corporately, but it will happen. God will not let you continue in your behaviors without bringing some kind of justice to the ones that are being affected. And this is exactly uh, what happened in the day of Korah. But I want to, I want to springboard this off because when we look at, uh, at the fall of Babylon, uh, the, the Bible says, well, first we're going to go to Psalms, Psalms 106. Let me see if I can find uh, Psalms 106. And let me look here. Um, Psalms 106, it says... Sixteen through eighteen, it says, and envy. It says they envied Moses also in the camp, and Aaron the saints of the Lord. The earth opened and swallowed up Dathan and covered the company of Abraham, so all that were with them. And a fire was kindled in their company, and a flame burned up in the wicked. So hell opened up its mouth. The Bible says. The Bible it it, it says in uh in in the story in the Exodus it, 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 or numbers, I'm sorry, in numbers that there was a common death, but actually that word in Hebrew means a violent death. So uh, death opened up and swallow them. But, but it says in Psalms that gave us more information. It says that fire was kindled. See, they were striking up discord and they were kindling a fire right in the midst of the camp. They were they were sparking a violence against Moses, right? They were sparking a violence against him, the uh, the leader of God, and they were going after him, and they were persecuting him, right? Mm -hmm. And they were good, and they were so their attention was on 
the light, right? The one that God had had marked, the one that God had had uh, had placed over them. And he was the one that was shining forth the light of the of the glorious gospel, right? right. He was the one that God had put his uh, his anointing upon to lead them. He was a type and shadow of Messiah Christ Himself, right? And so, when you go against God's people, you're coming against God. God. And so God had to intervene. He had to act or these people, there was 250 people that were going to, uh, to, to insult or come in, uh, could, you know, were incited in a rage that was going to uh, attack. It eventually would have become violent. Do you see what I mean? Mm -hmm. It would eventually would have been an overthrow. It would have been, they would, they would have had to kill it, Moses and Aaron. If God didn't intervene, if God did not show forth who he was in his glory and power and let them know that you're not messing with a mere man. Mm -hmm. You're not just messing with just a human being, someone just who is like you, but you're messing with my vessel. He is a man, but he is anointed and my finger is upon him. My, my hand is upon him and he does what I say. And I, and, and I live and, and I, and they had a relationship that God could trust Moses. Right. And Moses was in the bosom of God and God was in his bosom. Does that make sense? They were united, a united front, a united force. Right. And they were they were co they co uh, 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 aired together. They co uh, they you know Moses did not just took it take it upon himself, right? He didn't take it upon himself to be the leader, but he joined with God and God and him both were involved in uh, in uh, leading these people out of the wilderness, wasn't he not? Yes. So there, there were, they were, they were joined, they were conjoined together as a unified spirit, as a unified one in, in body and presence to, to do the will of God here on earth. Mm -hmm. See, people forget that a true man and woman and God is joined with the spirit of God. And the, we, you co-heir with him, you co you're, you're conjoined with him in spirit. And as long as you stay in a line with him, as long as you stay in, in sync with God and his will and not move for the light or the, or, or to the, the right or the left, or if you're not wavering in any way and you, he's got you, he's got your front, he's got your side, he's got your back. See, he's got your back. You have nothing to fear if you're in perfect unity with him, as long as you are in his perfect will and you're and you don't step outside of that. And see, Moses and Aaron, especially Moses, was in the order of God. They were in the perfect will of God and they were representative of God and they follow his lead. Yeah. And so God was not going to allow uh, any jealousy, envy, strife, or some incitement of some someone's evil intentions come upon him. See, God was not going to allow the Israel to be overthrown. Those are God's people, and God stands as defense for them. So anyway, so this is why rebellion will be cut off to its roots. Rebellion is the same as witchcraft. So witchcraft at its core is is uh is uh, is witchcraft is rebellion rebellion against the order of god mm -hmm. but so but we have to also see that there was some things that were involved in uh in the uh, reuben because uh a lot of what happens today and a lot that we can see a lot of what happens is uh the woman somehow cripples the seed line. Do you see? He went into Bela's bed and he defiled, or he, uh, you know, he uh, committed, a, a, you know, an, an adulterous affair with his father's concubine, which went into his house. And he, he and so, uh, so the this this act of of uh, it's um, it's almost a like a ritual per se. Do you see what I mean? 
Satan gets dominance. He gets control. He gets power through sex magic. He gets power through and not only sex magic, but with rebellion. Do you see what I mean? So what do uh, people that work and operate in uh, in intimidation and manipulation and dominance, they want power. And to gain power, they have to do two things. Two things. They usually go the course of sexual immorality. They will, you know, they will defile themselves sexually, or they will also, you know, and they, you know, cross, you know, they interchange, or they will, uh, they will commit violence with each other. They will kill, or they will cause, uh, uh, they will bloodshed. Has to be, has to be put on the altar, right? So rebellion and bloodshed and and defilement, all they all work to enthrone Satan, right? The, it all is part of the uh, the spiritual the the spiritual realm that Satan uses to get power over the masses, gets power over God's people, over. Because everybody wants to look at everything as it being natural, that just natural circumstances. This is just, uh, you, this is just a problematic situation. They never want to look at the actions that they take, the things that they do, the things they all have to do with with somehow of gaining power. It's it's all about if you know, did Reuben want dominance? He wanted control. Did he want to take over Jacob's house? Scripture is not very clear, but the act itself, do you see, is an avenue, just like we see in absent, is an, uh, is an avenue to gain power, to dominate, to dominate over the seed line, right? Mm -hmm. David was the, he was the seed, he was the royal heir to the throne, to the promised land, to the promised th uh, 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 eternal throne of God. He was the he uh, he acted and worked in in the the blessings, right? The birthright, the blessing, and he was the seed royal because when Reuben he forfeited his right as a firstborn heir to the promises of God, right? Yeah. So it fell on Judah, and it fell on on Joseph, right? When we talked about that earlier, uh, later, you know, earlier in our, some of our studies. So it fell on the line of Judah, the fourth, the fourth son of Leah, right? Not the firstborn. So, cause we can see that Adam was th this character in scripture that forfeited his rights, his seed line, his, his authority, his heirship, his, he, he was co-heirs with Christ. He was co-heirs with God. He was the husband of the world. He had he was co-regents with him in the order and the in, uh, in the administration of the earth, right? And he forfeited because he listened to his wife. It, it, always a female is involved. Do you see what I mean? There's always a female involved. It, that kind of subverts the plan of God or the order of God because Satan uses the characteristics of a female feminine characteristics to get his way. It has to be a stealth way. It has to be in the shadows. It has to be hidden. It has to be uh, in deception. See, men... Look at we look at Reuben. We look at um, Absalom. They went in front. They did it right in in the open. Men usually do these things in the open. If they're going to rebel, they do them in the open. Just like just like Dathan and Abraham and Korah, they they did hold back, did they? They thought they were entitled. They thought they should be the ones that are in charge. So they didn't, they didn't hold back. They didn't like, uh, they didn't, you know, after, after they convinced themselves that they belonged where uh, uh, Moses belonged, once they got enough people, you know, that would, you know, that agreed with them, went into this alignment, went into this agreement with them, then they were able to confront the situation and they were ready to take war. They were ready to take their place. They were, they're, 
wanted to do what most people do is what do you do? Divide and conquer, mm -hmm. right? You just go in and you conquer the land and you take which what you want for yourself. If you're bigger, you're stronger, you have more people, you've got more force behind you. Guess what? It was them who over 250 people, you know, in natural circumstances, who would have actually won the war? The one that had the most numbers, right? Mm -hmm. The most control, the most power. That, that's how it usually works. If there's more power, more money, more um, opportunity, more people siding with you, then you and you, it's just you and maybe some, a few here, a few there, and, or just you alone. The numbers don't weigh. You're outnumbered, right? Mm -hmm. And it, it looks like you are going to be the one that is defeated because it's just you. They don't see that God is behind you because that's something in the unseen realm. That's something that is not visible to the eye into our natural you know, our natural senses. So this is this is exactly how this just them two. And, the, and we have a camp of people and the rest of the camp, they just, they're not getting involved, right? Yeah. The rest of the camp is not getting involved. They're stepping back. Whatever happens, happens. Let it all just take its course, right? But, you know, you know they, 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 they didn't have an opinion either. Do you see? This is how the carnal mind works. You know, and this is the, the survival of the fit, fittest, right? It's a, it's, a, uh, it's a world of dominance, isn't it? A world of control and whoever dominates and whoever has the strongest arm is the victor, right? The one who wins, but not in God's army not in God's way. God and you are the uh, majority when it comes. God, we're not looking at numbers. We're looking at the power and the glory of God being demonstrated. And he did open that mouth and hell swallowed them up. Mm -hmm. So don't, don't underestimate the power of God using one vessel. Yeah. Don't underestimate because we, we, don't under we uh we don't quite examine the warfare and we understand we have an opponent we have a conflict a, a spiritual warfare and i and i don't underestimate the powers of darkness wow. i don't under underestimate the the control and how much he has deceived how much he has conquered how much he has destroyed lives i know for a fact that he has got in and made havoc and destroyed and nothing but killed still and destroyed many along the uh, along this six thousand thousand year journey right? right but don't underestimate the power of god working in a believer's life that is fully sold out you know, the what we're seeing on display with this Babylonian Christianity and and these half wit spineless Christians is not the whole of Christianity. It is not those who walk in the Bible and in, in the power of the Holy Spirit. See, we've got to understand that there, God may not have the majority and he may only have a few, but that few is going to rise up and take its place in in the earth and they're not going to stand down they're not going to uh waver they're not going to they're not going to be intimidated they're not going to sit back and let the enemy keep uh, uh you know running over them all the time trying to conquer them and conquer everyone around them do you see what i mean there is, there is a place where we must shot our feet and say no not more, not, not today satan not today you right We've got to get a fortitude. We got to get a fight about us that says, no, not today. You're not going to do it. But we've but we've got to be those people. We've got to be like Moses. We got to be like like Aaron that has sold out, that has put their sin and bury their sin, and they no longer that that uh, old person, that they walk in the newness of life and in the holiness of God, and that they are sold out complete, and they're not they're not walking in the fear of uh, of the enemy. Right. And that when we conquer the fear, when we conquer what we see on the outside, because it does seem overwhelming, though it seems like the majority, right? 
is going to win, but they, they will not win. God is looking for vessels that he can raise up that is going to take their stand and they're not going to back down because he will fight the battle. He will destroy his own enemies. We don't have to do anything. We just be there and we stand with him and let him do all the work. That's the glory of it all. We don't have to scheme. We don't have to uh, have, uh, we don't have to get behind and start to scheme evil like the wicked ones do. We don't have to plot and plan and scheme and and, and talk bad and, and bring down people. No, we, we stand in the integrity of God because if we walk in the light, he will reveal the darkness, right? The Bible says he's a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path, and he will reveal that which the enemy is scheming. This is the promise of the Lord. So anyways, so anyways, way I'm see what I'm trying to say is that there is there is definitely a rebellion and the and witchcraft is at its core. And this is where we're at. We're at the apex in Revelation because because we can see and we can look and we can learn from these men. Right. Mm -hmm. What not to do. And not not to think that we that just because we don't see God with people, we Bible says we know them by their fruits, but people don't discern the fruit. They don't deserve. They don't have wisdom. See, they're motivated by power. They may, they're motivated by doing their evil deeds. They're motivated by their own jealousies and envies that they forget who they're messing with. See, once because we don't know. And most of the time, most people have dealt with spineless Christians, people not, you know, not that are not completely sold out, people that are just half wits and people that, you know, don't take this very seriously, very carnal. But those who are spiritual, those who are spiritually discerning, those who have gone through the battles, the ones that have fought the bears and the lions, the ones that had overcome in, in life and has, and has dealt with warfare, those are the ones that you need to watch because those are the ones that have count the cost and they know the, the strategies of war. They know the tactics of the enemy. They know that their weapon, their warfare is not with flesh and blood, but with principalities and powers and rule and every evil, evil, evil devil out there. And they're not, they're not ignorant of Satan's devices. See, we, God has sharpened his people to know where the enemy lies. And his tactics, because his schemes never change. His schemes never change. They're the same. He is stealth. He's and he and he is slick and he does everything under under the radar. And and he and he always looks like he's the innocent one. He always looks like he's he's the one that's uh that is uh not there when he is there. He always looks like he's the uh, yeah, he uh, he's the victim, and so we, there's oh he knows how to get around some things because he does everything in secret. He plots and plans and schemes against those that are, that are in the light, and he has a slew of people that follow him. This is why when we are coming into the end days, we're going to be confronted with such people. This is why my title says every hateful bird because we need it because i'm going to springboard this off this blessing on babylon and the fall of babylon and why the fall of babylon is going to take place is because of this inordinate and inordinate of uh, control of society and how sorcery and rebellion is at the root of it all. And the people have become, uh, have become subjects to the, the devices and the schemes and the programming of Babylon. They, they don't realize that Satan has deceived them to believe that they that they are doing right when they're doing evil when they they are they're good 
but actually they're they're bad. Uh, they're 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 calling light for dark, dark for light, uh, good for evil, and evil for good. And so they are twisting and they're turning things upside down. And there is a double sided uh, appearance on the face. They look they look good. They look it looks holy. It looks innocent. It looks uh, sweet. But there's a sinister, diabolical and evil core to some of these people that are working and operating in Babylon. Babylon is not just one place. Babylon is a nature. Babylon is a, it's a sphere. It, it, it encompasses so many. And there is, I believe, a mother of harlots that is still not, hasn't uh, had revealed itself, but we're all inundated with Babylon and the ideologies and the, uh, and the uh, mindsets we're programmed to think Babylonian. We're programmed to think Roman and Greek. We're programmed to believe the, in, uh, in a world that has been inundated with satanic ideas. And we are we're, we deceive ourselves thinking what we're doing is good or we've been deceived by doctrine. It, um, any kind of worldly doctrine to believe certain certain things that are so when they're not so, so that we are justified in our actions. But but the real the real uh, the real uh, but the real side of it all it's just plain evil. There is no hiding it, and it says in uh, Revelations. Uh, 18, it says, and after these things, I saw another angel came down from heaven, having great power and the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice saying, Babylon, the great has fallen, has fallen and has become a habitation of devils, demons, satanic, uh, evil spirits, uh, works of darkness every evil thing possible and chaos babylon means chaos so anyone who's working in chaos anyone that is soul is in chaos anyone whose mind is in chaos anyone that believes in this world and the lives of this world and works and operates in their members and they they pattern their life out is in is in chaos. And so the body itself, the mind itself is, is the habitation of Babylon, right? Mm -hmm. Babylon is an idea. The Bible says is mystery. Babylon secret hidden, not in plain sight. It is, it's, it's, we, we get doses of it. We get, we get, we're, we're, we see it. It's, it's, it's every day we're, we're affected by it, right? Mm -hmm. But the mystery, the mystery of Babylon uh, is confusion. Babylon, all it is, is confusion. Fusion is not, it's not uh, subject to uh, this reality just, uh, or, a, an, or an event. Do you see what I mean? Or a place. Confusion is in the hearts and the minds of the people, Right. Confusion is within our chaotic uh, life, our uh, our our way of thinking. We're in ourselves are chaotic. We try to make peace when there is no peace, right? We uh, and everything that Satan stirs up, he stirs up chaos, right? Order out of chaos. They're trying to make order. They're trying to bring peace out of a world that is chaotic. That is being given over to chaos. That is run and its ideas. Sin itself, confusion. What I said, two seeds sown together in one field will bring chaos. Yeah. And then generation after generation after generation of seeds being sown uh, in 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 uh, different places. 
and 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 the and that the the seed of man has spread across many fields. There's many uh, baby mom, uh, daddy's mom, or the baby mamas or whatever for men out there. There's there there's no commitment. There is no giving of marriage anymore. It's all about uh, sowing your seed or sowing your. Uh, before you even get married, right? So in your roots, and that's the, you know, something that the uh, the world tells our young men to do, right? So, so as much as you can, not realizing spiritually, he's sowing in chaos. He is sowing into the Babylonian system. He is creating spiritual dominance for every foul bird, right? Yeah. And we're a habitation of demons. We are a uh, we are a generation of of demons. Uh the uh the 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 one that went to the the uh demoniac in Gerizim domin uh in uh, Matthew or G the one that was completely out of his mind. You know, where Jesus had passed by and he threw himself on the feet and the devil was throwing him and cutting him and 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 he was living in caves. He was living like an animal. Right. Mm -hmm. Our minds are being given over to that kind of animalistic behaviors and mind a full of chaos, not knowing what is right, not knowing what is holy, not knowing what is pure, not knowing what is good, not knowing what is acceptable. We we have become a habitation of devils. And it says, and they hold every foul spirit, every foul spirit, nasty spirit. That's what it means. Nasty, unclean, nasty, uh, very uh, uh, most defiled, degrading that you can possibly get. These are the most degrading type of spirits that, that they take you to the lowest of lowest, right? You do things that you wouldn't even think that you would do. But you find yourself doing because these are foul, dirty, nasty spirits, right? And the cage of every unclean, unclean and hateful bird. That word hateful means persecutor, stealth persecutors. And that word bird is feminine. And it means that word means every unclean, hateful woman. Because or feminist, uh, the dominatrix, uh, divas, demin, uh, uh, having the feministic uh, mindset, control, power, manipulation. Because see, women by nature carry the the uh, the that stealth sly, slick, uh, duality. They have a duality about them. They're slick and on one side, but then they can pretend and, and act like they're so sweet and loving at the, <laughs> on another hand, you know, so they have this, this capability to put on ma uh, a mask, to put on a front or airs and be able to seem innocent and pure and holy and, and, and gentle and kind, but the core of them are as full of hate and bitterness and, and, uh, and scheming and evil and manipulative and, 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 and really the motivation is wanting power and dominance, right? There's such a strong spirit of hateful birds that, that has, has has come to fruition in these last days, right? That the power of witchcraft has given these unclean birds, hateful birds, power to control, manipulate, and dominate in secret. Do you see what I mean? They can act in their rebellion in the unseen or in secret or in the hidden where it's not out in the open. So they do their sinister work in darkness, but then they come out as normal and delightful, well-accepted human beings or women 
putting on fronts and airs, looking glamorous, looking beautiful, diva, something that you want to admire, something to idolize. Oh, they're accomplished. They have all this, they have all this, uh, you know, beauty. They have this capability of, of, of being, of, of ex attracting the attention of others, right? Mm -hmm. They have, they, they, everyone wants to be them, look like them and have what they have, but they're, but they're, but they're detestable from the, at its core. Right. Mm -hmm. But this is, but you know, what we see on display with the celebrities is infiltrating within the, the middle class and in the, you know, in the poor middle class in in every parts of society. Right. Mm -hmm. Everyone wants all this is all all this is wanting to have power, have dominance, have control. This this hateful women not being women. And I and I'll prove that this is who what God is speaking of, that this hateful bird, because it's it's a pattern in scripture. And it and it and it depicts the diva, the goddess worship, and what it represents, which represents uh, the feminist, right? Dominance, mm -hmm. control, dominance over men. But women don't have their own power. They don't have their own strength. They're not like men that just want to come out and just get it over. And they want, you know, men like to flex their muscles, right? Mm -hmm. Men like to just come and let's just let's go and conquer by force, by fight, right? They want to fight in the open. They want to, they want to everyone to see, right? Yeah. And then, you know, they take it's, they take a small army or whatever. They'll go and they'll go possess the land and they will fight. And whoever wins, right, whoever is the, who wins the battle, whoever overcomes gets the spoils of war, right? Yeah. This is how men work and operate. They do it out in the open. Right. But we live in a society today. It's not so much out in the open. The evil now is in darkness. And I'm not only saying this about women, but because of this characteristic and attribute, it has also has uh also has you know has no gender anymore. Do you mean it is male or female? It's the characteristics of a witch and whoredom. Do you see what I mean? Yeah. It, it's it's the characters of Jezebel and Ahab. It's the characteristics of of an effeminate man versus a real man, right? Mm -hmm. And a feminine characteristics that has exploded and 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 it on society, and it has uh, has. Because what most women, they work and operate in gossip. They work up in strife. They work in manipulation and control. If they want anything, they have to manipulate it. So this has been, you know, this is being taught, right? It's it's on, it's on, it's, you know, it's, it is an explosion of this, how women get what they want in this world is that they have to do it underhandedly, right? right. So not only have women do it, but all both male and female have adopted these characteristics, which is a satanic characteristic, right? It's his nature himself is a sodomite characteristic, right? Mm -hmm. Because Satan, to he uses this, uh, he uses the female and the attributes of the females to be able to deceive the masses. But anyways, this is exactly, and it says, for all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication or pornea or her lust. You know, everyone has gotten into a bed with her and the kings of the earth had committed fornication with her and the merchants of the earth are wax rich through the abundance of her delicacy. And heard, uh, and I heard another voice from heaven saying, come out of her, my people, that you be not partakers of her sin. This is talking about Jezebel is the climax or the prototype of Babylon, right? She acts as a representative of who and the epitome of Babylon is the this ideal woman, this diva, the one that is in control, the one that has power, the one 
that is uh, that has uh, has subjects under her at her beck and call. And the uh, and the Bible calls her a witch and a whore. She used the mastery of witchcraft and whoredom to be able to seduce the the people and bring a spell upon the masses where they're not working in all their faculty delusion this strong delusion because they but there's a, a in this spirit of some have it to the maximum and some have a, a small degree but but at the core it's still there that plagues in our homes in our workplaces and in our societies at hold and in our government and in our world and it is the queen of heaven that is coming to power that all the kings of the earth has been has has laid in bed with her has fornicated with her has committed spiritual fornication because this is the fruit of giving yourself over to the babylonians system and ideas right and we are just we're just breeding that which is what we have been doing through our our everyday in we thinking things innocent our rituals our ceremonies our our observances and in our actions right yeah. we just think it's you know part of life giving over to the ideologies of this life given into the the observances of this life is producing characteristics of one Je uh, Jezebel and Ahab right yeah and in feminacy saints and Sodom, uh, sodomites ones that are are seeking for their own glory and their own power right mm -hmm. And it says, and I had another voice from heaven saying, come out of her, my people, that ye should not partake of the sin that ye receive not of her plague for her sins have reached unto heaven. And God has remembered her iniquities, her sin, her rebellion, the things that she has done to gain power, her lust and her seduction that she has has uh, put out there for people to to attract to you know she puts out her own you know her own was there's a for a queen bee her own what's it called uh i forgot what it was but there's a, a scent that bees put out a ferritons i think there are ferritons that they put out that people attract to them it's a it's a way of that queen bees to seduce the worker bees. That's what it is a worker bees, right? Mm -hmm. To do their bidding. But she had to conquer in in her in, she had to conquer in the realm of the spirit to be able to be promoted. Does that make sense? Yes. So to be able to put off those farrakhans or their farrakhans, she had to she, and that sorcery and that power she herself had to put out. She had to be initiated, right? She had to do and act and behave. She had to put up something great or something special something that uh, would give her this uh this a uh, promotion of power so and to give her this control and be able to, to seduce the other worker bees to follow her she, and she had to for satan to endow her with that kind of power she had to give up something that was precious right Something that uh, that uh, that uh, that's going to cost uh, somebody else's life. You know what I mean. Most of the time, it's a blood sacrifice. It's usually a blood sacrifice that most people that work in this kind of unmerited power, unauthorized power, had to do and had to give up and had to uh, relinquish. Uh, a, a love, a, usually a love, a loved one to the powers of Satan to be so Satan could destroy and use that blood as a sacrifice to get so that and so that curse. See, they get power through as many curses coming upon them 
as many uh, demons' powers come upon them, as many as they can get, is uh, because it's uh, demonically a charged energy, negative energy. They have to constantly be uh, initiating and bringing in these sacrifices and these blood sacrifices and bringing up about these or these things to gain power. So that they will be anointed because, you know, it's because you're become through that blood ritual, you're becoming demonically inspired and well, demon possessed and demonly influences and your demonly influences is a fragrance to other demonized people. Right. Mm -hmm. So on the outward, you look successful outwardly. You look uh, beautiful diva. You have it all together, prosperous, glamorous, or you, or you're put in a position of control and power, authority, boss, you know, whatever it may be. You there's it there, but what? But it was unmerited. Do you see? You didn't. You didn't earn that position of authority that influence that recognition that glamour that glory you didn't you didn't earn it right. you sacrifice another person a loved one for that place and that is psychotic do you see what i mean mm -hmm. this is what witches do they're psychotic and i uh and so and there's a story in uh in in the bible on Lathalia, Lathalia, that sacrificed her own grandchildren, her own flesh and blood for the seat royal so she could be heirs, queen, and sit on the throne of Judah. And she, after her son died, and she, uh, she wanted to uh, take his place as queen. He was king, and he had died. The authority was was uh, was going to go be given to one of the her grandson but she wanted that prominent place she wanted that place of domination she wanted that control she wanted that power do you see she she risked killing her grandchildren for it and only one survived and not, and she herself didn't do it but she caused others she caused a a, a rebellion in the house in the kingdom of god right mm -hmm. she caused it because the rebellion just kept getting worse and worse after each kin she was jezebel's daughter king ahab jezebel's daughter and she just learned from her mother jezebel right how to gain power and how to usurp it and how to use uh her control to kill other people right to right. destroy people and to so that she could rise to power and so she just followed in the same footsteps as her mother jezebel and so there's a sacrifice that must take place to to assure them of this place of control mm -hmm. and 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 it's sad to say that most people mask they mask the what they're doing there i i don't believe that they in their right mind can comprehend the uh the evil that they're doing mm -hmm. that when they may do these rituals and when they uh, put their loved ones on the altar to so that they can gain something that they, they must be told a lie to thinking that this is somehow good when it's evil that that is somehow acceptable there is no one in their right mind would be able to comprehend that as being uh something that you would want to do for the sake of your own your own benefits right yeah. but since their hands are not involved right since they're not the person actually doing the dirty work they're not the one that's that is um actually putting their hands on it per se right mm -hmm. 
But the, but the powers that be, the powers that are in control, the ritual, the demonic activity that is surrounding that ritual is the one that is going after those people or going after that situation, right? To yeah. destroy it because you are sitting as a medium for it. You are you are the medium. You are the you you're set in between both spirit and the physical, and you they are using you as a vehicle, right? Yeah. You're channeling you're channeling those demons across the spirit divide to be able to work uh, to work in their sinister diabolical ways, right? Their evil ways. You, you're not getting anything for it. You may get the the rewards of the wicked, you may get something from them in this life, but the end result is demonic possession, demonic control, and damnation of your soul right. here and here, the here and now, and all for eternity, unless you come to the realization of what you just did, right? Uh -huh. Until you come to the to the place that 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 you that people do. What they do, and they and 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 see right now in a world in America, witchcraft is at its peak through Harry Potter and through Disney. It's at its peak. That uh -huh. you can go online and learn how to cast spells and do rituals and and conjure up spirits. You you we glance at tv that promote witchcraft right? right sorcery magic constantly we're being inundated with magic and all this stuff and it's in a cartoon form most of the time right they're grooming our children to be witches mm -hmm. and not only that sexual witches because they're grooming our children to be sex deviants along with sorcery and witchcraft to to gain power from darkness do you see what i mean yes. to so that they benefit in this life but this life is short right this life is coming to an end <clears throat> your life is but a vapor it's not it's you you don't have all eternity to to uh <clears throat> to to uh to get a, to escape from this right if you don't repent, you're going into an eternal damnation for of a lake of fire. Mm -hmm. Just like Korah and Dathion and Abraham did. The I'm sorry, the Bible says that a fire kindled up around them. Mm -hmm. <coughs> they were consumed by that eternal fire, right? Right. And there is no escaping that. There is no escaping that. And so, so we, so the world in itself is training our children to work in absolutely rebellion. Mm -hmm. And the Bible, and, and so I'm going to uh, read because let me uh, explain in this uh, Athena it said uh, Athena is a, the the representative of of the owl, the night creature, or the screeching owl in scripture. And Lilith is her, is her Hebrew name, Lilith. Uh, Lilithov, night, means twisting, the twisting of the light, means deception. It means they do it in darkness. They do it in secret. And Athena, which is, uh, you know, Lady Liberty and uh, this goddess worship, she's a goddess. And it says that she is she associated with wisdom warfare, who was later uh, uh, the Roman goddess Minthra. Athena was uh, regarded as a patron of protesters of vict various cities across Greece. So, and the <laughs> owl symbol means wisdom, means, and also. The, her major symbols include owls, olive trees, snakes, uh, Gregorian, and uh, so uh, I get it. So that's the Roman Gregorian calendar, uh, days, weeks, and and months. For her origin, 
She's a goddess. Athena was closely associated with this uh, Athens, Greece. She was known as uh, 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 having temples. And uh, so anyway, she was a war warrior goddess, basically. <laughs> and so she and a lot of people, uh, she's like a prototype. But Lilith is also is the is is the same as most of these goddesses and which are revered and reverenced and loved and uphold in uh, new age and paganism and witchcraft as being symbols, icons, people that they worship, they mimic. And Lilith mean the, uh, means night, the night or twisting of the night. And she is, the owl represents her. And she, she also represents death. She uh, she represents Sid. She represents the feminist movement. And she was also in Greek mythology. She was known as being the wife of Lucifer or the first wife of Adam and that uh, that rebelled against Adam. So they have their own uh, Genesis story. But she 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 is. Uh, but she is the representative of this out. So the Bible, so the Bible says that every uh, nasty or hateful, persecuting bird, because uh, this is what goddess worship will lead to. They lead to psychopathic ideology and ideas, right? Mm -hmm. Because you become a very narcissistic, inhuman being you lose all sense of your uh, natural characteristics and natural attributes given to you by God to be a nurturer a life-giving source a nurturer one that is to uh, protect their family love their family and 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 one that sustains life you become, you become the object of death, right? Mm -hmm. This is why Lilith and, and Athena and the, uh, the uh, hateful birds of Babylon, they, they, are, uh, they are narcissistic psychopaths, right? They they, this is why abortion clinics and are at demand. And these are why they promote these things because they want to promote the this uh this uh, luciferian mindset right mm -hmm. to de basically destroy the traditions of god that the the uh the patterns that god has put put in they want to distort and pervert and and uh, misalign god's way in the earth right because then god would reject that but god is rejecting those that are going under this umbrella. There is a, there is going to be judgment upon this uh, on on Babylon, and the body is fallen. It's fallen. It's God will destroy it. He has crippled it during the time of Christ, but there is going to be a judgment day. Do you see? Mm -hmm. And every as I said, this is why the Bible says, "Come out of her, my people," and it's it's just interesting to me to see that. Most people don't relate Revelation 18 as a, a, every hateful bird as being uh, women, women who are given over to this ideology of being uh, being outside of the character which God had created them to be. Right. They have given over to Athena. Lilith and the ideology of the pantheon gods that has ha, that is changing them, their very nature. Do you see? They are being twisted and perverted, and they are and their mind is being is being corrupt. Does that make sense, uh -huh. Mom? <clears throat> and so, anyways, it says, <clears throat> and I and I got this article. It says. This psychopath, the 10 signs of a psychopath in women. Most psychopaths are portrayed as violent, dangerous criminals who lack the ability to feel empathy or remorse. Both female psychopaths often don't fit this profile. Female psychopaths are less physically violent 
they commit fewer crimes and also show different traits than male psychopaths. Women psychopaths can be harder to detect because they are more emotional, social, and display fewer antisocial traits than men. So they act and behave in society like they're normal, right? Like they're innocent, they're sweet, they're they you know they're the victims. They're the there there's no nothing to be afraid of. There's there's you know I'm I'm just this innocent by, bystander to everything else around me. I I mean I myself is not carrying any of these characteristics because these characteristics of being a psychopath is inward characteristic and is done in a stealth hidden way that is not easily detected by others, right? This is what this article is saying. So we don't normally associate women as psychopaths, but women are, are their psychopath is just a little bit different. Like I said, the characteristic of a man, how men, men, when they're antisocial or they are given over into rage or some uh, me mental illness, dis dissociation, per se, they just, they're just violent. They act in violence, do they not? Yes, they do. But women's psychopaths act in violence too, but they may act with their hand. They may act in violence and murder or, or whatever. It's getting to that point where people are being more open, but traditionally throughout, uh, throughout the ages, they've been more stealth in their in their schemes right they have caused more harm and now through witchcraft it's easier for women to get involved in in their in their uh evil detestable ways in their in their uh, conniving manipulating controlling domineering ways uh, or hatred because women are more emotional they're more ven vengeful they want they have they want to uh, retaliate right they want to avenge uh, their any kind of uh, uh, you know wrongdoing so they but now they can do it through witchcraft which makes it a little bit easier so the results are happening in the spirit realm not ne necessarily happening on a on a, a one that it can be detected one can can uh, no one can really identify them as the corporate right because it's like prayer right it's like prayer when we go to pray we pray for our brothers and sisters and we pray blessings right lord bless them and give them a good day or prosper them uh, bring healing upon them. Lord, do good to them, right? We This is how our prayers to one another should be. We should be praying over them blessings, right? Well, these people pray and they act in the dark arts with, uh, and with, uh, with uh, you know, and they do enchantments and, and they speak to the dead, necromancy. And they conjure up spirits and they make potions, right? Mm -hmm. Or they do a blood sacrifice. They use animals or they'll use uh, or they'll use mediums of some sort to get the spirit realm to work on their behalf to do uh, evil deeds that they themselves would not do personally, right? Mm -hmm. But they're involved. Do you see? They're involved because they're the one that is conjuring up that spirit to go and assault somebody attack them even put them to death right mm -hmm. so you are li literally involved just like athena just like jezebel they may had had others do it right they themselves may not have been the one that was actually doing the evil deed their hands were not uh being soiled with blood but on a spiritual level their hands were full of blood right that God seen them as the one, the arbitrator of the crime. And he was going, he was holding them accountable. Just, just like uh, Naboth's vendor. He, she signed a death decree on Naboth to get that vineyard. And she, and she, but someone, she used the justice system. 
right? She used the justice system because Ahab and her had power over the justice system, be able to write any decree they wanted to and put a death sentence on anyone. So they used they use the abuse. They abuse their right, right? The abuse of power to do something unjust and to kill a man. Their, the blood was on their hands. God doesn't see that, oh, you're in power, that you have authority, you have a right. Just because what position you are, you have no rights. There is a moral code that we must hold to, right? No one has a right to put to death anybody. No one has the right to put a curse on anybody. No one has the right to act in vengeance towards anyone. Right. It, it, even if it's a physical or if it's through a spell. You have no rights and God holds you accountable just like you were the one that did it with your physical hands. Right. And so the people need to get to realize the things that they say about people, the curses that they put upon people, the things that they talk about on people, bring in negative energy, bring in demonic activity in their life. God is going to hold them accountable. The Bible says that every word will become into judgment. You will be judged for every word. The Bible says, yea, let your yeas be yea and your nays be nay. Every other word, the Bible said, comes from the evil one. Life and death are in the power of the tongue. You will be held accountable for the things you say, the things you pronounce, the things you that you put on and say about people because your words have power and they can cause demonic activity without you even aware. And God will hold you accountable for the things you say. But I'm taking this to such a deep level because people don't see women and the, the fall of Babylon has to do with this idea of, of, the, of the hatred birds that, is been, uh, that has, has taken over society. And, they're, and in society, it looks like a statue, just like a, these Lady Liberty and uh, Athena. They're statues. They look glamorous. They look beautiful. They, don't, they look innocent. They look, they look like it's beautiful. Everything's great. But what is what the working in what's working in the midst of it, right? God is is going to bring in judgment over, right? Uh -huh. That is what God is dealing with. It is what is it is what uh, what people are doing in secret. God is going to reveal opening, uh, open the and so a lot of people don't they don't associate psychopaths with females and we've got to get an idea that that narcissism and psychopathic uh characteristic is non-gender mm -hmm. Je it's just the way that people do these things right mm -hmm. it, it's just the way how they do them but the, but the end result is the same the same emotional uh disorder is still the same right they still have a mental, emotional disorder, right? Mm -hmm. And they still don't have empathy or affection towards one another. It's a pseudo affection. It's a pseudo. They don't care. They don't have empathy. They will slit your throat to, and even their friends if it will benefit them or they get the advantage, right? They do not care that you are just a, a source for them to do their dastardly deeds. That's all you are. The development relationship with their victims. One of the traits of a female psychopath is the tendency to form relationships with the people they victimize. While male psychopaths usually target strangers, females are most more likely to victimize people they know. Yes. Some female psychopaths use filtration or sex to lure in people with money or or power and and then lie con or manipulate these people into giving them things this tendency shows a cold-hearted nature of a female psychopath who won't feel bad about hurting or using others even those who are close to her so you're just an object you're just a source if you you are either 
if you get in the way or if they can use you in any way they can to benefit them, to get their what they want to accomplish, they will use. They have no emotional empathy or sympathy for you. They have no emotional affection towards you. They don't like you. They don't love you. It's all a facade, right? Mm -hmm. They use indirect forms of aggression. Female psychopaths are just as aggressive as male, but they just use different, less direct forms of uh, aggression. While male psychopaths are prone to physical aggression, female psychopath uses relational, relational aggression, like gossiping, excluding people, or forming alliances against someone. So they, you know, they, uh, they, uh, they form an alliance. They, 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 they use numbers. They, they use a confederacy to, to come. This, so this character, characteristic of what's going on with uh, Cora, Dathion, and Abram was a feminine characteristic of bringing in a confederacy against Moses. You know, that is the way Satan used. That's the nature of Satan. That's the power. Satan uses that power that is, that is in the, in the darkness, right? Mm -hmm. Scheming within the, to be able to, to, uh, to get his job done. It's what, it, this is why the Bible says walk in the light as he is in the light. <laughs> You do, we do nothing in darkness. Some may even threaten to self-harm or order to manipulate other people, or they may lash out at people when they're upset, name calling, or becoming verbally abused. They play the victim card. One of the unique traits of a female psychopath is this tendency to present themselves as a victim in order to get attention, pity, or to emotionally manipulate others to get what they want. Female psychopaths may use the victim card or play the damsel in distress to pull out at the heartstrings of people who are empathetic, caring, or generous. And they have that power and control over others to get them to do things emotionally they would not do if they were not can somehow connected and tied with them spiritually they have become they have came under a delusion they if they were outside of that paradigm they and they had to make a decision that had nothing to do with that individual had nothing to do with their circumstance they may not act in the way that they would act in the midst of their being controlled emotionally by the, this uh, this uh, psychopath that is controlling them and making them do things that they otherwise would not do if they were in their right mind or they were not in that circumstance. So they change people's mindsets, their their decision making. They control them on an emotional level. Male psychopaths can be calm, cool, and collective, but female psychopaths have a much harder time controlling anger. They are more irritable and prone to anger outbursts. Unlike normal non-psychopathic person, most psychopathic females feel relieved after they lash out instead of feeling guilty. Female psychopaths sometimes even feel entitled to their anger and aggressive responses, placing the blame on other people, on other persons. Their tendencies to act on their uh, bent of anger and impulses is one of the reasons why female psychopaths have a harder time functioning and experience more social impairments than men. They use de deceptive, deceptive, deceptive tactics to get what they want. While male psychopaths are more violent and direct in taking what they want from people, female psychopaths tend to rely more on deception. For example, it must it it's much more common for female psychopaths to be arrested for fraud or extortion rather than for physical or sexual assaults unlike males which nowadays there's more female sexual assaults than there has been in, in further since in, in this generation. 
<coughs> since previous. Sorry, I have a cold. <coughs> These kind of crimes highlight the deceptive and cunning nature of the female psychopath who may come up with elaborate cover stories and lie to con or manipulate people. They want acceptance, but sabotage relationships. Typically, people who have antisocial personalities, disorders, develop strategic relationships to get their wants. And not because they have a desire for connection or acceptance. Psychopaths, females, are often more social. And some even have a true desire to be accepted by people. The problem is that because they tend to also be cruel and impulsive, they are unable to maintain healthy, lasting relationships. Instead, they are more likely to sabotage their relationships by victimizing <coughs> their closest, the closest to them. They, uh, they leverage secrets and personal information. One form of relational aggression that common among female psychopaths and also a sign of psychopath is the tendency to use personal information about other people against them. Female psychopath may use secret or personal information about other people against them as leverage to bribe, manipulate, or control them. For example, they might threaten to expose information about a previous affair or substance use problem their boss had unless they agree to pay them more. Some will also gossip or spread rumors or lies about other people who they have once discredited, which is another form of relational aggression. They get other people to do their dirty work. A female psychopath is better at forming strategic relationships to get people to do things for them, especially their dirty work. They, do, uh, they don't want to do while they aren't usually physically violent female psychopath engage in crime often have male counterparts who handle the violent aspects of their crime just like jezebel and athelia they may also con or convince other people to commit other illegal or immoral acts on their behalf often so they can declare in, uh, innocent later or have a scapegoat later on so they're always the innocent part they're in the shadows they're never the one that's actually doing it they're they're uh they're the one that's calling the shots they're the ones that everyone's bowing to they're putting their own line their own life at risk right their own uh they're putting their own whatever that it may be that they're taking the risk for that person that is emotional control right if you put your life in, uh, online or there's a jeopardy of you failing in some place, then you have been given over to a delusional, uh, a delusional relationship. Do you see you're you're under you're under a spell? If you are if you're causing if someone is causing you to do something immoral. Uh, unethical, someone that's causing you to harm yourself or harm uh, uh, your circumstance in any way, and they have that kind of power and control over you to behave in a way that you would not normally, that is that is a satanic control, right? And you are the one that's going to suffer the consequence, not that person, because just like this article says, they will have an excuse. They will have an escape. Though. They will put all the blame on the person that is being that is being uh, that is that is involved for the middleman. Right. Mm -hmm. Another common trait of a female psychopath is an emotional instability. While male psychopaths often have a restricted range of emotions which makes them cool and detached, females with the disorder may not show this trait. Research shows women psychopaths are more likely to struggle with depressive symptoms and mood problems, and also more likely to struggle with anger and jealousy, just like Cora. Jealousy is infeminine. Envy is infeminine. Do you see uh, striking and doing and attacking and assaulting 
on the basis of of jealousy or envy or any basis at that point, any emotional uh, 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 ideology or mindset, it is is ludicrous, right? It's 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 instability. You're unstable at that moment. You've got a, it's mentally uh, you're de- deranged mm-hmm. because and we are coming into a society where we're seeing this connection with people. You know, there this alliance with people, and people think that if they join with this certain people, that somehow they're going to benefit. But it but it will all be uncovered. It will all expose itself. No, no one gets away with anything, right? No one. Even Athalia, she she reigned on the throne for seven years after killing her grandchildren, her own flesh and blood. After you know, to get this power, this unmerited, unauthorized power, she ruled, thinking she she somehow escaped the judgment of God. She escaped the rule of law, the moral rule of law, the moral code. She thought she was the epitome of the law, you know, that she was untouchable, that she had too many subjects that surrounded her. She had too many influence. She had too much wealth. She had too much that protected her. Those work bees, I'm telling you, right? Mm -hmm. That she felt like she was untouchable. She didn't feel like she was, that she... It was ever going, nothing was going to befall her. This is the mind. And this is exactly what uh, Babylon, she she does not feel like she will ever, uh, ever be judged for her, for her actions. That somehow she will escape the justice of God. Somehow she will escape uh, any kind of reproach or any kind, coming in any kind of, uh, uh, it, you know, justice and that's and that's such a lie because you're going to be judged you may not get your justice now but believe me when you when you cross over and you realize that satan has played you as a fool and he has put these ideas in your mind and he has hardened your heart and has made you a psychopath where you're you have no you have you have lost your the, the characteristic of being a woman, which is gentle, which is kind, which is virtuous, which is holy, which is uh, which should be one of, of, of empathy. So a safe place for a person. A woman was made to be a, a, a comfort. She was supposed to be a compatible source for her husband to be a comfort not only for her husband, but for her children, she should be a safe place to be. There's, you know, the Bible says that, you know, a, 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 a gentle, a gentle woman, a being gentle and contrite in heart. You know, it's vir- a, a virtuous, gentle, <laughs> meek spirit is the characteristics of a woman. I may be bolsterous in my words, but the, but and be and be authoritative in, in the word of God. But m- m- the core characteristics of the fruits of the spirit is love, joy, peace, gentleness, kindness, goodness, and long suffering and patience. But women should already have some of these qualities already embedded in them. They are they have God had put it within women to be this place of, of safety, a gentle place where men could come and rest, right? Right. A safe place of one that secures her home, the one that uh, that her, nurtures her children, right. uh, the one that it brings goodness and life to her environment, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, we need to get back to the ideas of what Bible says what women should be. Right. And we should and we should not let this world shape us Mm -hmm. into believing to be a woman. You have to be equal to a man that you have to you have to or control a man or 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 dominate a man or to dominate in the workforce or dominate in society or to have some some kind of 
uh, uh, accolades and adoration from people and, and tried to be in a figure of being glorified and, and exalted. We need to come into our role. God will bless those who will follow after what he had designed and created. If you, I know we've all have been distorted. We've all been corrupt. We've all been perverted. We've all had, you know, had an apple in that bag, right? We all have to relearn our roles. Do we not? Mm -hmm. Because we have been, we have been, uh, what about conceived in sin, shaped in iniquity? We, it, our nature it, it by itself has been, it been distorted and turned upside down. The whole pathway of salvation is to get us back into our rightful roles of being what God had originally designed. Mm -hmm. Isn't that correct? Yes. And to, and to follow his patterns, but society will make you psychotic. That's what what this what Babylon does makes you psychotic. It perverts and distorts and corrupts that which God to the degree to the utmost degrees that God has designed for man and woman, right? He takes it to the to the epitome of of bringing you to the lowest form of what you think you are elevating, you think you're rising, you're thinking you're be, you're becoming uh, something, you know, you're like elevating because you're getting all this uh, fleshly rewards, right? Mm -hmm. But literally, you're, you, 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 there is, <laughs> there is no glamour. <laughs> I'm saying there is no glamour in those lonely places. Those places are, is when you get up in those high places, those lofty places, you think you achieved to those of uh, those places of success, the world deemed success. Most are committing suicide. Many are depressed. They realize they sold their soul to the devil and they realize there's no way of getting out and they live a miserable life until they die. Right. Right. They realize it's a lonely, it's lonely on that apex of the pyramid mm -hmm. it, and it and it wasn't really what it what it was really they thought it really was all about right they thought oh wow i want all that money i want all that fun that glamorous they all are alcoholic drug abuse uh no one loves them narcissistic uh, in behaviors in relationships of people that are narcissistic and selfish and it's a it's a it's a vicious, vicious lifestyle that gives you no, uh, do doesn't give you nothing for the soul. Does it, there's no love. There's no, uh, really no true love and relationship. There's nothing to obtain in those, in the, in this world that if, if your pursuit is one of, of only selfish success, it's a lonely journey because you have to kill about everything around you to get it. You'll kill about every relationship that is anything that is good, anything that is holy, anything that is acceptable, anything that is lasting will come to naught, will come to death on that pursuit to, uh, to those uh, high places of the earth, right? Mm -hmm. And you'll die lonely, miserable death. And then hell awaits you. So it's not even worth it. People sacrificing their lives, thinking that they're just living it up. And they're just pretending. It's a, it's just a facade. And it says uh, they are a good at pretending. Psychopaths and sociopaths both can, be, you, can use superficial charms or uh, char uh, charismatic or charisma to lure people close to them, but women may be better at this than men. For example, male psychopaths tend to display more narcissism, but female psychopaths often seem friendly, charming, and even passive at first. They're passive aggressive, I guess. 
The deception tactics used by a female psychopath makes them harder to detect and more successful at forming relationships. They're not, they're, they're all relationships at this level is only superficial, right? Not true, genuine friendship, not true, genuine relationship of love, companionship. This is the problem. You can't get companionship after self-seeking people. You just can't. And once you start to rise up to the top, you'll find out all people are self-seeking, doggy, doggy world, and they will cut through you. And there is, and they'll, and it's just, it's just a vicious cycle that just keeps, you know, repeating itself, right? Yeah. Unfortunately, they will often end up using, abusing, or taking advantage of those who they end up getting close to. See, there's no end to this vicious cycle. It's just, it's just constant death, destruction, heartache, and pain. This is what Babylon is. It's a place, it's an habitation of devil and every foul spirit and every unclean and hateful bird, feminine and feminist movement. Uh, because everything that Babylonian worships is that goddess worship, right? That leads you right to Satan himself, Lucifer. And he uses that goddess. He the, that is the cohort. That is the that is the one that is joined. That is what everyone is worshiped. That is what everyone is replacing Jesus with. Right? They're replacing the Son of God instead of the Son of God being your mediator, the one that you come under His power, coming under His authority, coming under His rulership as King. He is the only seed royal, right? He is the only seed, and it's that woman that is trying to take over even the Messiah seed royal, right? She even wants and wants to knock him out of place. And God will not allow it. And this is exactly what Babylon has done. He, she has exalted herself in the seed of Messiah, you know. And 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 Christ is only going to allow it for a for a period of time. He's reigning in those who's going to uh, follow him. Those who are going to come out of Babylon, and he, and then anyone who ends up in Babylon is going to fall like Korah, Dathion, and Abram. The, the uh, Bible says that the earth will open up and the bottomless pit is going to open up and all that that they worship is going to manifest manifest itself here on the earth. And everything, the Bible says, and the, a wormwood, it represents the wormwood and this adulterous uh, uh, goddess worship Star worship will lead to the uh, destruction of the earth. Will it lead to the the opening up of this bottomless pit, and judgment will fall upon those who have given themselves over to that worship, to that feminine, infeminine worship. We must come under the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. He is King. He is a warrior King. He's a man of war and he is going to destroy all those who oppose him. And it's going to be violent, just like it was with Korah, Dathion and those of the of camp of Israel. And on that, I'm going to end. And you should stay. Amen.